tell your family to hop on. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us and welcome to our April Community Conversations with Kelowna Supernatural. I'm your host, Emily Baxter. And in our first two events, we focused on Kelowna Supernatural products and different recipes to use those products in. Tonight, we're switching gears. We are learning about the health benefits of probiotics and we're learning straight from an expert. We'll talk with registered dietitian Elise Klopfenstein about the importance of including probiotics into your diet. We'll also see how Kelowna Supernatural kefir and yogurt are made. And we want this to be a space for conversation. So as always, I'm going to start with my question. I'm going to tr give you a trivia question from our event last month. So comment in the below or the comment section, whichever, wherever it appears on your screen. I want to know if you were paying attention, how is milk from grass fed cows different than milk from conventionally fed cows? So comment below. We also want to know who you are and where you're tuning in from. So introduce yourself. Tell us um, what state or what city you're tuning in from and your favorite Kelowna Supernatural product. So let's take an inside look on how yogurt is made at Kelowna Supernatural. We'll watch a little video clip here. Our Kelowna Supernatural Organic Cream Top Yogurt starts with the same high quality milk that all our products are made with. Fresh organic milk from small family farms that grass feed their cows. We add cultures to the milk along with the vanilla flavor base. The milk is vigorously stirred to ensure the cultures and flavor are thoroughly mixed throughout the milk. The cultured milk is then pumped into the cups and the cups are sealed to ensure no outside bacteria can access the milk so the yogurt is allowed to naturally culture and thicken. The magic really happens when the cupped milk and cultures go into our culturing room. Here, the cups sit for 60 degrees Fahrenheit while the probiotic cultures grow and make the milk into our delicious yogurt. The yogurt does not have a specific period of time that it cultures for. Instead, the yogurt pH is tested at a specific time intervals 
while it continues to culture until the milk reaches a pH level of 4.5. We take a lot of care to get this exact. The yogurt is then wheeled into the cooler to chill as rapidly as possible. This preserves the natural thickness that the yogurt develops without the use of any thickeners or stabilizers. Our yogurt has a natural sweetness due to the cows being grass fed. Our plain yogurt has no added sugar, but yet does not have the tartness typically associated with many natural yogurts. After the yogurt is chilled, it is cased into packs of six and sent out to your local retailer. So a nice little inside look on um, our production facility. So if you're just joining us, we are learning about probiotics tonight, skipping, switching gears um, from our normal focus on recipes and products, and we are interviewing an expert tonight. So I would like to welcome Elise Kloppenstein, registered dietitian, to the screen here. And we're just going to learn as much as we can in the short amount of time that we have with Elise. Um, hello. Hi. So I want to ask you first, we're going to start off with a super easy question, but start us from the beginning. What does a registered dietitian do? Okay. Well, I guess I should say the first thing is I don't write menus. I know there are a lot of dietitians that do. Um, and I think that's a very common thought that you must sit in a room and write menus. And that's not my forte. There are many different ways that I can practice, but my opportunities really lend me to look at the research. Um, I do a lot of time spending what's new, what's coming out. And then the goal is to really take that and interpret it for an individual to use. So how do I take information that seems very pie in the sky, very scientific, and how does it work in this person's house or in this person's family or even in their um, long-term care living facility? So taking that stuff and making it easier to understand. Awesome. I think that's what we all need. <laughs> we need things to be in our terms, the things that we're familiar with. Um, so what, what really inspires you about nutrition? Well, I think there is so much information out there that doesn't apply to everybody. So I love it when I can meet with someone and talk about what they've heard and how to apply it in a real world setting. I love that aha moment when they're like, oh, I can do this, or that I now know how this would work in a different situation. A lot of times we come with these big lofty goals of all the things that we're supposed to do to meet that magic term of being healthy, but we don't set the smaller attainable goals that help us get there. So I help people kind of fine tune those. And I think it's that realization that it is those small little changes that are what make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to say a quick thank or a quick welcome to Emma. She is actually tuning in from O'Hare International Airport on Twitter. So hi, Emma. <laughs> if you are just now tuning in, I'm talking with Elise Kloffenstein here. She's a registered dietitian and we're going to dive a little deeper now into um, probiotics. So the media talks a lot about prebiotics and probiotics. So why, what, what's the difference and how do they work differently? Right. I guess my first thought is these aren't new. And as we talk about this a little bit more, you'll learn that it's not possible that this could possibly be something new. They have existed since the creation of human, the human race. So it isn't mm -hmm. something new, but it is a new buzzword. So um, oftentimes we hear about things and try to figure out how they apply. So the prebiotics and probiotics, they need to be together. So they need to be discussed together so that you understand which one you're putting in your body and how do I make it stay there. So the prebiotics are the thing that we talk a lot about and we'll talk about where those are found. But our probiotics are like that gut bacteria. So they're the healthy bacteria that we need, and it's in your whole digestive system. So trying to keep that stuff as high as possible and in a nice balance. Well, since that is a live thing, a bacteria that's living inside of you, you need those pre, so think of them that you need them before, you need those prebiotics that are actually the food that grow the probiotics so that they can continue to work in your body. Okay. So... 
What's an example of a prebiotic? <laughs> so the prebiotics tend to be in things that are very dietary fiber rich. So remember, pre is the thing you have to eat. So that's the nutrients you have to put in. So those really high dietary fiber foods, and those could be coming from garlics, onion, Jerusalem artichokes, leeks, asparagus. You can picture those things, right? They're kind of hearty. Yes. And they're also in like our bananas and our grains. So oats, barley, apples, cocoa, flaxseed, seaweed, wheat bran, and then our root vegetables like the jicama, the buckadock, and the canjack. All different ways to talk about different root vegetables that are all over the world. Okay. So, okay. So then why are, so we've talked about those things, which like you said, they're hearty. There are a lot of, um, uh, I think of them as things that are going to help you um, digest food. So then why are probiotics important to include into your nutrition? Okay. So that's a really good point, Emily. We know these are foods that help us keep us regular, mm -hmm. but we forget that it, they're keeping us regular because they are constantly supporting those probiotic, that natural mycoflora. So mm -hmm. we just think that it's roughage, right? So it goes right. on the top, it comes out the end, but it's because it's promoting those probiotics. So those probiotics are the fermented foods that we eat. Mm -hmm. And so those are the ones that you put them in, but you kind of, kind of keep them alive. Okay. Okay. So what kind of foods are fermented? Yeah. So you can think about something that starts as a really basic thing. And then what do you do to culture it or create that next level? So fermented foods tend to be in our dairy. So our yogurt products that you mentioned in your video, you can also pickle vegetables. So you could have pickled fermented pickles, or um, you could even do your fermented drinks like the kombucha mm -hmm. or you, or your kefir too. Okay. So what, a, so sauerkraut, I assume mm -hmm. would be one of those. Okay. So as we're entering summer months and we're having bratwurst, yep. some sauerkraut on there for your fermentation. Yep. You can add that in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, we do have a question from Sam. He's asking if there's any special application or benefits for athletes. And I mean, we all, we know that these prebiotics and probiotics go hand in hand for everybody, but any added benefit for an athlete to focus on? Right. So when you're in that peak athletic performance, you're really trying to work to make sure that when you eat the food, you get all the nutrients you can out of it. And that's exactly what these probiotics can do. So I'm going to go one step backwards to answer that question. So it gets a little bit, think of it from the scientific side. So our body is a whole triage of different um, microbes. So that microbiome is all those different combinations of bacteria, fungus, yeast, viruses, protozoa that just live in our body. And there's no two people that have the exact same combination. So because you have all that different flora in there, you have to maintain the healthy stuff and keep it going. So for a probiotic to be considered a microbe, it has to meet three different criteria. So it has to be able to be isolated from the human. So you have to be able to separate it from its human host to survive. It has to survive in the intestinal tract as well. So it has to live there and continue to grow. It has to have proven benefits to you. So it has to be able to have some sort of health benefits. And we'll talk about those. Okay. And then be safe to consume because what's the point of putting this in my body if it's not safe to have and then it just lives there forever, but it's not good for me. Uh -huh. So when it meets those for four criteria, a microbe becomes a probiotic. Okay. Are you wow. with me? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm trying to, I'm picturing it. I'm trying to, you know, imagine my, my colon and, you know, <laughs> everything going through. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're working out those things, if you have all those things in combination, the point would be that the foods you consume then get into the bloodstream in the appropriate way and in the right routes that they're supposed to be there. So that if you keep that microflora equal, the stuff that you need comes into your bloodstream and is absorbed to be available for whatever 
activity you're trying to do, um, whether it's keeping your calcium levels up or it's keeping your bones strong or it's even trying to make sure that the little nerve endings that need to fire to make your eyes see, to catch, all of those things it will be able to absorb. If your microflora is completely off, you lose all those nutrients. They just continue on down through the digestive tract and never get absorbed into the blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sam, thank you for that question. That, that opens up that. Yeah. It just expands everything. If you're just joining us, um, I'm here talking with Elise Kloffenstein, registered dietitian. We're talking specifically about the health benefits of probiotics. I want you to feel free to um, send any questions into the comments um, so that we can interview our expert right here live on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're joining in from. So um, you already mentioned this just a little bit, but how can we incorporate these probiotics into our, our daily meals, our daily snacks? Yeah, that's a good point. So trying to make this applicable. So obviously I'm going to give you different suggestions for each time of the day, mm -hmm. but don't do them all. <laughs> so. <laughs> The thing about incorporating any of this stuff is it's promoting that regrowth of the healthy gut bacteria. And that takes time because mm -hmm. this is a small little bacteria we're talking about and it trying to make a change for the long term. Just starting with one of these things on a regular basis, it may be only two times a week even is a way mm -hmm. to begin to introduce that. OK, so starting with breakfast, mm -hmm. an easy thing would be to start with uh, a yogurt because it's naturally that fermented dairy and cultured. Mm -hmm. Buttermilk is also another option. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to make things into a buttermilk combination, um, you could put that as a smoothie, you could use it as part of your uh, egg wash, whatever you wanna use in your, your, and then sourdough bread is actually naturally occurring has that mm -hmm. fermented bread yeah. in it. So that could work as a breakfast option for you. Okay. Or, and well. of course, combine that with whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Moving into your lunch, an easy thing would be using your cottage cheese. It's easy to think of cottage cheese as a dairy product, but remember to make things convert from milk to cheese to cottage cheese, bacteria are literally involved in that whole process. So that's that mm -hmm. natural fermentation that cottage cheese is going to give you that. Kombucha, which we talked about is a drink that you can mm -hmm. purchase or you can make your own. Tempeh. Um, and then even fermented pickles could be another snack thing. You could incorporate those into a sandwich or you could have those as just an afternoon pick me up. Sure. Yum. Okay. <laughs> then your evening meal, I think we're, I tend to think my evening meal is my warmer meal, but I know that that's not the case for everybody, but your sauerkraut, I don't know, that pairs so good with your bratwurst right, and your right. sauerkraut. That's where we're getting into that warm thing. Miso, so it could be incorporated into miso soups. We often see those in Japanese restaurants. Yeah. That's that mentioned edaname. Um, okay. Kimchi and, oh yeah, and then the kimchi, which is kind of a, a version of like a sauerkraut, but a little bit more heat behind it, but it's that fermented vegetables with a little bit more combination in there too. Yum, yum. Courtney says um, she really appreciates that probiotic can help keep the heart healthy. And it's just going along with um, just with everything else with, you know, a healthy gut, a healthy heart, healthy lungs. Is that how it goes along? I think the hardest part about, you know, you can put a lot of great foods in, but if you're not absorbing them, it doesn't do you any good. You know, mm -hmm. so we talk about the benefits of different food groups. And so trying to find how do I keep that absorbing into my body? And there's a, yeah, there's a lot of different things that we could talk about. Would Is now a good time to kind of go through the list or? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so when we're talking about the health benefits, it really all starts with that balance of the digestive system. So that really refers to our immune system. Hmm. How do we keep those things in check? Because anywhere that we put a foreign thing into our body, um, crosses from, outside of our skin to into our bloodstream, we need to make sure that we're keeping that healthy and, and strong. So that's where that immune system comes in. It also is huge in controlling inflammation. So that's what she's talking about with the heart. We talk a lot about decreasing that inflammation and those are your two major things. And then if you take everything from that, it all stems from those two big factors. So helps with digestion of the food, 
controlling that bad bacteria, which think of that the other way. So, you know, if you have an overgrowth of bad bacteria down in the stomach, imagine what that's going to do to your breath. Mm, yeah. So it can help, help enhance that breath, helps keep your dental health good as well. Helps prevent the illness because you're not going to introduce those bugs through the nasal passage, through the mouth, because you already have a good flora going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it comes, it, it has so many different things. I, do you want me to keep going? There's more. No, I, yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the vitamins, you know, that's how you create even some of your vitamins is through those healthy probiotics. Um, supports all the cells along that whole digestive tract too. So from the tip of your lips to the bottom of your bottom, mm -hmm. those are all cells that need, I'm sorry, you're talking to a dietitian. Yeah. Well, it's the stuff we got to know. <laughs> um, and then break down and absorb all different medications too. So if you're consuming a medication that needs to be introduced through the stomach wall, you got to keep that healthy bacteria in check so they actually absorb your medicine, even if it's a daily vitamin that you take. Right, right. Well, I always know, you know, when my kids are on you know, antibiotic for ear infection, we always kind of speed up or uh, increase, I should say, increase their um, yogurt consumption because we're told to pair a probiotic with that antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Uh -huh. Antibiotics, we've done a much better job of trying to pair the right antibiotic with the right thing, but no matter what, it's still going to clear out some of that good stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, of course, the when you talked about breakfast foods, of course, I'm thinking of our yogurt that we have. So we have a, here at Clone Supernatural, we have a plain yogurt as well as a vanilla yogurt mm -hmm. a plain greek yogurt so all those things would would lend well with berries or um, making them into a smoothie the other thing that you didn't mention but i wonder if, if you can talk more about is um, kefir so mm -hmm. we have a plain organic 100 percent grass-fed plain kefir we also have it in vanilla the vanilla um as you can see i don't have the vanilla because that's the one I prefer. So <laughs> it gets consumed quickly. Um, but with just like with all of our products, so our milk comes from grass fed cows, it's batch pasteurized, which means that um, we don't heat it up really fast, kill off all the bacteria and, and cool it down. We do a slow pasteurization so that um, so that those probiotics are maintained in there, so they're not just all killed off. The good stuff's maintained, and then of course, um, certified organic and kosher certified as well. And you mentioned the cottage cheese, um, and I just I was looking at our cottage cheese, thinking I don't think much of it as being a probiotic. I always I think my yogurt, my kefir, but you're right, cottage cheese right in there. It has cultures, multiple different cultures in it, so that's. That's really good to know that um, those good things um, we can put into our daily nutrition. Um, in general, so our kefir, for instance, has 14 different strains of um, cultures. What do I want to say? Probiotics. Probiotic. <laughs> yeah, 14 different strains of probiotics in there, which um, comparing comparatively to other um kefirs and other consumable products like that, it seems pretty high. Mm -hmm. I went through the list and was looking at the different um, studies that were done. There's a couple in particular that I'm not even going to try to say the word. <laughs> I'm not going to try to pronounce them. But in general, um, is 14 a good number to have? I mean, what's, what's kind of a good number of different strains? All right. Good question. So the number one thing is to have multiple different strains. Absolutely. You don't want to just consume one. And the other part of it is within those strains, how many little live bacteria are there? And so mm -hmm. that's the idea that you, for those of you that haven't had a kefir product, I don't know, have you guys described that mouthfeel? It's not like anything else. Right. And I don't want to say you can taste the bacteria, but there's a feel that definitely comes that mm -hmm. you can have that fermented the kefir it, it's 
I used to call it the champagne of yogurt because it does. It has a, that effervescent kind of bubbly feeling. Yeah. And that's that live cultures that are in there. I believe it's about trying to get as many as you can as, in a small quantity, but it also is about getting them frequently too. So how often do I put these back into my body? Yep. Right. So Emma has a question and this is, this is great because I was just going to ask this. So, um, you know, there's also probiotics and prebiotics in capsule form. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course we're all looking for the best, you know, best nutrition, but how can I just take it quickly? So yeah. tell us about, I mean, are those, are those okay to take? Are they bad for you? You know, what's, what's the comparison? Yeah. So this is where you get into a little bit of my personal opinion. So mm -hmm. I'll put that out there, but I really encourage food first because I think that we want, I want people to taste food. I want them to enjoy food. I want them to sit around a meal together. I don't want us to get to the point in which we, there's a movie and maybe you all know what it is where they sit around on their recliner chairs and drink their drink on their spaceship. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. want to get to that point in our life where we just are consuming the nutritious thing without any understanding of the world around us, you know, knowing where the food came from as we get into the spring months, man, seeing it grow and harvest, there's just so much more about the food than just the capsule form. Right. That being said, there are absolutely appropriate times that pill forms of vitamins, minerals are appropriate, but I would do them based off of lab studies. So if you have had lab work done that says you are deficient in this certain thing, consume the mineral supplement for a period of time and then redo the tests again to see if it's effective. Right. Um, I want you to eat the food and enjoy it. I keep saying that, but it's about what brings me pleasure. Mm -hmm. I understand the convenience. And if that is what works for you, absolutely. And then we could do a whole nother presentation about how to determine capsule forms, because there's a lot of misinformation about what's out there about probiotics too. Because remember, if you're going to consume a probiotic, it won't live in your system unless you have a prebiotic to support mm -hmm. it. Okay, so when I'm having my yogurt tomorrow morning, what's my pre? What do I need yeah. to put into it? Okay, so if we go kind of back to that list, if we could incorporate the yogurt with some oats would be an easy mm -hmm. thing. I know, I think 80 degrees is the temperature plan for tomorrow here in Iowa. <laughs> so I might not want hot oats, but I could do those overnight oats sure. and in the kefirs and your yogurts, the idea would be that we don't cook them because then we can kill off that good bacteria. So anything that you can warm and then add that at the end will help. So if you want your warm oats, then you put your yogurt on top at the end, or if you want to do overnight oats and you know, you don't warm that up, then kefir would be a great thing for that too, because sure. that'll absorb the extra moisture that's in a kefir will soak right into those oats and give you the moisture you need too. Perfect. Yep. Kefir, it, I can put it into smoothies. And so if I'm adding um, blueberries, strawberries, if I'm adding a fruit into it, that's the pre going into the probiotic, correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And we also talked about those fibrous things like flaxseed and chia seed. Oh, those both fall in that category too as okay. a prebiotic. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So what's, you know, what are you going to have for breakfast tomorrow? What's your favorite... What's your favorite um, way to incorporate probiotics into your first meal of the day? Emily. What? <laughs> well, okay. So first off, I should say I'm a real person too, right? So when you see dietitians in the grocery store, don't critique their grocery cart. Because <laughs> they've got, you know, in our household, I have four other people I'm feeding too. So um, Monday mornings at our house, um, I'm also a pork producer. So we have a young man at our house that declares that <laughs> the bacon has to be on Mondays. So okay. we'll have to incorporate that somehow with some of the yogurt we've got going on in the fridge um, with mm -hmm. some berries so that we can have our bacon plus our probiotics and our fruit. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me go to a couple questions here. Um, the first, Gloria wants to know, can we use granola as a prebiotic? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, the term granola is very generic, though. So yes, does it have oats in it? 
because mm -hmm. you could make a oatless granola as well. And then also, you know, part of that granola would be put more stuff in it. So if you're adding some more of those flaxseed or chia seeds in there, you're getting just even more. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And then Sam has a question about, um, you talked earlier about the workup to see what you're deficient in. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of, what do you need to have that done? You, I think you said blood work. Yeah. If you're looking at vitamin, vitamin and mineral deficiencies, those are usually blood-based. Um, the disadvantage with, with those would be they are identifying when you are significantly deficient. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind when you're looking at that profile. What are things that either are on the low end of normal? Because if it's simply adding a particular food that helps promote that, go for it. Great. Great. Yeah. Well, these are great questions. Keep keep asking them because this is our time to this is our time when we have our expert right here. Um Oh, Emma says the buttermilk is really good and she needs to drink it straight. Oh, okay. You know, I've actually had some folks compare our buttermilk to our kefir saying it's, it's a taste. They remind, uh, the two products remind them of each other. Um, so yeah, give it a try, Emma, chug some, chug some buttermilk. That'll, that's bound to help athletes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chocolate milk, that's a good recovery. We can talk about that later in the summer. We'll talk about chocolate milk being in recovery. We should. Yep, that's another good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm just looking at comments here. Emma's being silly now. Um, <laughs> see, this is what happens when you're sitting in Chicago here waiting for your next flight. Nothing to do but make fun of your dad, right? <laughs> All right, so... Um, let me think, let me think. There's a couple things I wanted to point out. We do have um, quite a few recipes on our Kelowna Supernatural website. So things like Elise talked about the overnight oats made with kefir. Um, there's at least three different recipes there to incorporate. Um, kefir smoothies, great strawberry smoothie recipe. And then we also have um, some options of making cold soups and using kefir as your milk supplement. My favorite homemade tzatziki, using plain kefir to make homemade tzatziki. Um, and then adding it to whipping cream. You know, how, what can we do? Oh, oh, Joe's got something to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, Emily, I was just going to say, I posted some of those links in the comments. So Great. to make it easy, uh, we'll also follow back up and put some posts out on social media with these comments uh, or with these recipes that sure. people can pull from. So be sure. looking at our Facebook feeds or social media feeds here in the coming days. And okay. you, met, you mentioned the whipping cream. That's one of my favorite, right? And if I can oh, just pull yeah. off of what Elise said earlier, I love a fruit parfait cultured whipping cream on top. So I'll take the whipping cream, mm -hmm. whip it up and add some, about two tablespoons of yogurt to it and just fold it in and put that on top of my uh, fruit parfait. And that's mm -hmm. really good, nice. really delicious. It would give that tanginess instead of that, you know, overwhelming sweet that we often get from, you know, dessert whipping cream. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that sounds great. Okay, Joe, since we have you here, so Joe Miller is our, um, sales manager here at Kelowna Supernatural. So tell us um, about the products that I kind of went through, the yogurt, the kefir, the cottage cheese, where can folks find those things? Yeah, that's a question uh, we get on our online, on our website and Facebook quite a bit. For these products specifically, I have a list uh, that I pulled together of stores that you can find the yogurt and the kefir at. Um, a lot of our products can be found in various stores. You mentioned the cottage cheese. That's probably one of our number one sellers, a seller across the country. So go into your local uh, natural food store and you and ask them for it. If they don't have it, ask them for it. Ask them to pick it up. Our yogurt as well is available throughout the country. Sprouts Farmer's Market, we want to give them a shout out. They just picked up our uh, plain and vanilla yogurt in all 300 plus of their stores. 
So we are nationwide with uh, vanilla and plain yogurt. We invite you to go in there, support them, give them a shout for their support of small family farms in our creamery. High V, if you're in the Midwest, the High V stores, a lot of them carry our kefir and our yogurt. If they don't, they have it available to them. So again, we'd ask you to ask the health market manager at your lo local High V to bring it in. We would love to uh, have it there. Uh, natural grocery stores nationwide. Many of them have our yogurt and kefir, and we're very excited to continue to grow our relationship with them and get more products in their stores. But uh, kefir, predominantly in their Midwest and Colorado stores, yogurt in their stores uh, nationwide. A local to the Midwest, a small local chain, is Fruitful Yield in the Chicago area. Great uh, stores, great natural food stores. Highly recommend uh, visiting them. They also have our yogurt in there. And wanted to give a shout out that we will be on a live stream with uh, Fruitful Yield on May 7th. On, and we're going to do it on their social media feeds. They're going to do an interview on what our, what our values are that we hold for our farms. What values do we hold for our creamery? How do we feed our cows during the winter? We're grass-fed cows. That's one of the questions they said they wanted to ask. So get ready. Another one is the Market Wagon in Eastern Iowa. Market Wagon is a great uh, delivery service direct to your door. And they carry our yogurts and our kefir. And you can order it there. Look them up on Google or we'll post them on our social media in the comments as well. But look them up. You can place your order and they'll deliver it directly to your door. A few other quick ones uh, that carry our, predominantly carry our yogurt is Air One in California is picking up our yogurt here in May. Mama Jeans in the Springfield area has our yogurt and kefir. Bristol Farms and Lazy Acres in Southern California, select of their stores have our yogurt and kefir. And Mom's Organic Market in the East in select stores has our kefir. So yeah, and many of the co-ops, natural foods co-ops okay. across sure. the country have our yogurt and some have our kefir. Kefir is predominantly in the Midwest at the moment, uh, but many of them have our yogurt. So I just kind of gave a big list there. Let me make it a little bit simpler. I'll post a link onto our social media, onto the comments here for our product locator. We have a very oh. dynamic product locator on our website. Go in there, type in your uh, zip code, and you'll see all the stores local to you that carry our products. And many of them products they have. I asked you earlier, if they don't have the product you're looking for, ask them to bring it in. Consumers can do a lot to help us bring product in to the store, and we appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the comment lines are still open, so if you have any more questions, just stick them in there. Um, otherwise, I've really appreciated getting to talk with you, Elise, about probiotics, because the main thing that stuck out to me was the prebiotic pairing with the probiotic. I coming in, I would have thought they were the, they were um, kind of opposing things. Mm -hmm. so I didn't think of them as hand in hand. So that's really good nutrition knowledge to, you know, know that your probiotic needs to be paired with that pre. They just work together throughout the gut. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. So thank you so much, Elise. And thank you all for joining us tonight. This recording will be on Facebook and on other social media as well. Um, but as we enter the warmer months, our cows are just itching to run and play. So um, they'll be getting a lot more time in and out um, on the pasture. Um, and one of our family favorites um, around the summer is picnics. Now in Iowa, winters are cold, summers are hot. So we've still been doing pic indoor picnics, which my kids love. But next month for our community conversations, we're going to
focus on family picnics. So we're going to show you some of my family, some of our favorite um, dishes that we incorporate Kelowna Supernatural into um, for, our, for our picnics. So we're excited to see you then. And just keep an eye on um, social media to see when that's going to be scheduled for in May. Yeah, I had to think now <laughs> what month we're in. In May, um, keep an eye on your social media for um, our next community conversations. So thank you all and have a good night. Bye, Elise. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.